Hi there, welcome to Paint and Zoo. My name is Matt and I'm one of the education team here and today we're going to go on an African safari. Now I know that some of you, nearly all of you, are going to be back at school now but we thought you might like to come to the zoo anyway so we've come into our tropical trails exhibit here to come and learn a little bit about the African animals that we've got here at the zoo and their lives in the wild. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out what you know about Africa. So if you're working next to somebody I want you to have a little brainstorm with them if you're on your own, you're going to need to write down the answers. See if you can come up with five African animals in the next 15 seconds. So you've got five animals to think of in 15 seconds. Three, two, one, off we go. So you could have come up with lots of different answers for African animals. Okay, you may have come up with words like cheetah, lion, zebra, giraffe. Okay, we've got animals here at the zoo that are the tallest in the world. Okay, the fastest. We've also got some that look like the grumpiest. Okay, possibly the ugliest, uh, but also some beautifully brightly colored animals from Africa as well. So there are lots of different animals from Africa. We're gonna try and meet some. Some of them you're gonna recognize and I'm hoping that some of the animals you meet today will be new to you. Right, if we're going to talk about Africa, then the first thing we probably need to talk about is the weather there, okay, the climate. Okay, Africa is absolutely huge and it's much closer to the equator than where we live in England. In fact, Africa is across the equator. If the world is wearing a belt, okay, then Africa actually is in the north and in the south of the world, of the earth, okay. And if you look at that, that's going to affect the weather there, okay. In Africa, because it's on the equator, there's not a real winter. Okay, and there are parts of Africa where it will be warm and wet all year round. So lots of rain and warm all the time and that's where you're going to find the rainforests. Okay, so that's one of the habitats we're going to talk about today. Now in other parts of Africa it's going to be dry all the time. Okay, it may be cold at night or at certain times of the year, okay, but that's where you're going to find the deserts. And the final habitat we're going to talk about is what we call the savanna and that's the big rolling grasslands with just a few scattered trees and that can be dry for a lot of the year but at certain times of the year in the rainy season there's going to be a lot of rain. Now these three different habitats that we're going to talk about today so rainforest and savanna and desert are home to lots and lots of different species. Now I want you to try and guess how many species of animal scientists think there are in Africa. So you've got 15 seconds, turn to the kid next to you Write an answer down if you're on your own. Just come up with an answer. How many different sorts of animal do you think there are in Africa? You ready? Three, two, one, off you go. Right, the answer to that question depends on who you talk to. Scientists think there are over a thousand different sorts of mammals, or different sorts of furry animal in Africa. Okay, they think there's nearly 3,000 different species of birds, 3,000 different sorts of fish just in the freshwater, in the, in the rivers and the lakes. Okay, and if you get onto bugs, scientists think there's over a hundred thousand different sorts of insects in Africa. So I hope you got a big number for your answer because scientists think there are hundreds of thousands of different species of animals in Africa today. Right now, we can't talk about every animal from Africa during this short lesson as much as I would like to. So we're just going to focus on a few species. We're going to meet maybe uh, four or five of the famous animals and then some which I'm hoping will be new to you. But we're going to start with an animal that loves to eat this. Now, which animal here at the zoo would like to eat a plant like this? Can you think? Now I'm hoping that you've come up with the answer giraffes. We've got six lovely giraffes here at the zoo. Okay, we've got six beautiful females and they range from Flory, who's our youngest, she's just a few years old, up to some of our oldest giraffes, which are teenagers. Okay, and giraffes in the wild would love to eat the leaves off of acacia. It's got very long spines. Okay, but they've got a neat trick. So if you watch our giraffes here at the zoo, they've got a very long tongue. And I've got a model of a giraffe's tongue right here. Okay, giraffes have got a really long tongue and they can stick that out and wrap it around the branches of the acacia in between the spines. And then when they pull the tongue back in, it pulls all the bark and the leaves off with it. So a really long tongue and a really long neck helps them to reach leaves that other animals can't reach. 
Right, now for the next animal, we're going to stay on the savannas of Africa. So we're going to stay on those rolling grasslands, and we're going to talk about rhinos. We've got two beautiful black rhinos here at Painton Zoo. They're called Manny and Sita. Okay, now rhinos are famous for their horn, which they use when they're defending their territory, or if they're arguing with another rhino, or if they're defending their young against predators like lions. Okay, but my favourite bit about the rhinos is the way they use their ears. If you watch our rhinos and you watch their ears, you'll see that their ears are always moving around a little bit like satellite dishes. Now, I want you to get your hands and make them like a little cup shape around your ears, okay, and then move your, your hands around and see if you can listen to different parts of your classroom. If you move your hands around, does it change what you can hear? Can you hear better in certain places? Okay, then in others. Okay, so you can work your ears a little bit like a rhino. Right, now you can't talk about Africa without talking about one of its most famous residents. Who has a skull like this? Okay, can you think which animal has a skull like this? Okay, now you're right, it's the lion. Okay, but there's a problem. If we're talking about lions, the lions that we have living here at Painton Zoo are actually from India. They're a special rare type called Asiatic lions. Now, if you go to our sister zoo down at Newquay, okay, then you can see African lions there. Okay, we've got beautiful lions, and the Asiatic lions here look nearly the same as African lions. Now, they've got huge canine teeth, which are brilliant for grabbing hold of prey and for uh, bringing it down. Okay, they can tackle very big animals. Okay, things like zebras and sometimes even giraffes. Now before we leave the savannah, we've got one last animal to meet. Turn to the kid next to you. You've got 15 seconds. Why do cheetahs have spots? Are you ready? Three, two, one, off we go. Now I'm hoping you came up with the word camouflage. They don't have their spots for fashion, it's for camouflage. But cheetahs need to camouflage themselves from the prey as they sneak up on it. So if they're sneaking up on a gazelle or something like that, they need to be able to creep through the dry grass. But they also need to be able to hide from predators like lions. Okay, they're at risk themselves. So being able to sneak along through the grass is really helpful for a cheetah. Now the Spots work so well out in the dry grass on the savannas of Africa, but not so well in the lush green grass of Devon here at Painton Zoo. Right, time to change habitat. We're going to move over to the rainforest now. We're going to move over to the Congo Basin. Okay, and I would like you to tell me whose skull is this? Okay, so when you look at this skull, which animal has a skull like this? Now I'm hoping you said gorilla. We've got four beautiful gorillas here at Painton Zoo. They're all males, we've got three teenagers, and then one older guy called Pertinax. Okay, now gorillas, when you're looking at them, they often look grumpy, but that's strange, because they're actually really sociable. Okay, they're, they're big family units that will move through the forest, and they're quite peaceful vegetarians. Now, if you look at them, they've got enormous muscles across their chest. Okay, and it makes you wonder why a vegetarian, a peaceful vegetarian, has such big muscles and such big teeth as well. And a lot of it is to do with display. So the big males are trying to make themselves look really strong, partly to uh, intimidate other males, but also partly to scare away predators, things like leopards. Right, now we've got one final habitat to consider, and that's the desert. But when I was thinking about animals that live here at Paynton Zoo, most of our animals either come from the rainforest or from the savannah. But there are a few that will just be found at the edge of the desert. Now I'm hoping you've done your homework and you've watched The Lion King, because if you've watched that film, then you'll know the answer to this question. What is a meerkat's favourite food? Now, if you've watched The Lion King, you'll know that meerkats love to eat beetles and grubs. In fact, scientists think that nearly all of a meerkat's food in the wild would be things like beetles and the grubs that grow into beetles. Okay, so that's their favourite food. And if you think about where they live, uh, right at the edge of the desert, they live in a place where there's lots and lots of sunshine. So they've got little sunglasses built in, they've got little dark patches under their eyes that help them to live in such a sunny place. Okay, now I wanted to show you a little bit of a different animal, and I know people have seen baboons before, but here at Painton Zoo we've got Hamadryas baboons. They come from a really dry part of Africa, they come from Ethiopia, and you often find them moving through dry grasslands. We've got about 40 Hamadryas baboons here at Painton Zoo. The males are much bigger than the females, and normally you'll find one big male with a group of females and youngsters moving together. 
Right, let's meet a bird. So we're going to meet the biggest bird. Okay, we've got Maisie, our ostrich. Now, how can you tell that an ostrich is a boy or a girl? Turn to the kid next to you and tell me. How can you tell if an ostrich is male or female? Ready, steady, go. Now you're right, you can tell Maisie's a girl, not just because of her name, okay, but because she's got grey feathers. Okay? The male ostrich, when they're grown up, have got amazing black and white feathers. Okay, but Maisie is definitely a girl. And ostriches are brilliant to watch. Okay? They blink sideways, so you can actually see them blink sideways, and they've only got two toes on each foot. Now I promise you some different animals, okay? and one of the animals we're going to meet is this one. It's called a marabou stork, and they come from the savannas of Africa. You'll find them pecking around in, in grassland, but also in the wetlands as well. Okay, and they're famous for picking up and swallowing things like fish and frogs whole. But why does a marabou stork have a bold head? Now, rather like a vulture, a marabou stork has got a bold head, so that when it's reaching inside carcasses, when it's reaching inside dead animals, it doesn't end up with its feathers getting all clogged up with blood and guts. Isn't that lovely? Okay, they've got enormous beaks and that helps them whether they're chasing fish and frogs or whether they're reaching inside a dead animal to pull out the guts. Lovely. Now for our last animal, I've chosen an unusual clue. So which animal at Paynton Zoo am I thinking of? Now you're right, I'm thinking of our bongos. Now if you've not seen a bongo before, they are a beautiful antelope. Okay, ours come from East Africa and they'd be found up in the mountains. Okay, they have got the most beautifully coloured coat with lovely stripes going down it. And we've got two, we've got a male called Ali and a female called Azizi. Okay, and they're a really elusive antelope. That means they hide away, they're difficult to see. Okay, and those stripes help them to disappear into the forest. Now we've talked about lots of big African animals, okay, but it wouldn't be fair not to include the bugs. So I've chosen to include some of our beetles, our amazing brightly coloured beetles that we have in bugs at home. We've got beetles called jewel beetles and another one called a sun beetle as well. And both of those love eating soft, squishy fruit. So if you imagine if you left a banana in your school bag for way too long and it had gone soft and squishy and black, that's what they like to eat. Soft, squishy fruit on the forest floor. Now we've met lots of amazing animals from Africa, okay, we've talked about lots of different species from different habitats, okay, and we haven't even touched on the island of Madagascar. Madagascar is an island just off of Africa, but it's got some very special wildlife, but I think that is for another lesson. I've got one final task for you. I would like you to design an enclosure, a zoo enclosure for an African animal. Now to do this, you're going to need to go away and choose an animal and then research it to find out about its life in the wild. Knowing about its life in the wild would help us to care for it properly here at the zoo. And then you'll need to design the enclosure. So maybe you could make a model or draw a picture and add some notes to tell us why you've chosen to design it the way you have, why you've chosen those features. And then you can send us a picture of your model or a picture of your picture on social media. Now, thank you very much for watching School from the Zoo. I hope you've enjoyed meeting our amazing African animals and coming here to Paint and Zoo. Cheers.